Hello, this is Dr. Cissé covering anatomy and physiology. Today we'll be covering chapter 12, the nervous system, but specifically we'll talk about the neuron and the neuroglia. What to define the neuron? What does it look like? How does it work? The different types of neuron, how they do their job, the cells that support the neuron, how they support the neuron, and then the location of each type of a neuron based on structure and based on function. Now first, what is the neuron? It is the central cell of the nervous tissue. Remember we have four types of tissue, epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous tissue. So the nerve tissue is a type of tissue that is made of cells and things between the cell. So the basic unit of function of the nerve tissue is the neuron supported by other cells. Neurons, you can see on this picture that the neuron has a cell body, the big part here with the nucleus. The cell body is also called neurosoma. Then you see some extensions called dendrite. So dendrite, neurosoma or cell body, and this long part called the axon. Now, what is the function of the neuron? It has some, the neuron has some properties, some universal properties excitability or irritability. It means that nerves, like the neuron, can respond to something. So if something happened, the neuron can react to it. And then conductivity means that the neuron can respond to stimulus by producing electrical signals that are quickly conducted to other cells at distance location, distant location. It means that when you have a stimulus, when the cell, the neuron responds to something, that information, that stimulus, that electrical power can run through the neuron from one space to the other place. What about secretion? At the end of the neuron or at the end of the action, the neuron will secrete something, can secrete something, or it can secrete a neurotransmitter to other cell so to, to, to transmit the message. This is the neuron here. Here you can see the cell body with the lots of dendrites here. And then you see the axon, this long thing here, and the terminal part of the axon. The beginning of the axon between the cell body and the axon is called the axon hillock. And right after that, you see the initial segment of the axon. You have all the um, organelles, just like any cell, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, neurofilaments, nucleus, nucleolus. So you have these, um, organelles here. Then you see the dendrite here. Inside, you can see also the rough ER and free ribosomes inside. We call them missile bodies in um, neurons. You can see also this red arrow showing the direction of action potential. We'll talk about how things run into the neuron from the beginning, from the cell body to the axon terminal. That direction is shown here on the axon. You also the axolemma, which is the membrane on the axon. You see the telodendria, the very end of the axon. So this is the neuron. So this neuron on the left is talking to the neuron on the right. So the one on the left, the space between the two is called a synapse. So the neuron before the synapse is called the presynaptic cell, and the neuron after the synapse is called the postsynaptic cell. Now, what is inside the neur neurosoma? You have the cytoplasm, of course, mitochondria, lysosome, Golgi apparatus. You got different things in the neurosoma. Then the dendrite, are the part of the neurosoma extension that receive information. So if the neuron has to respond to something, the neuron will receive it on the dendrites. And then the axon here at the bottom will be the part of the neuron where the information coming from the cell body will be transmitted, transported to the end of the axon. So these axons of this neuron together will represent, will make the nerve fiber we'll talk about in a few minutes. So you can see there are branches because they have to communicate with thousands of other neurons. You see the axoplasma, which is the cytoplasm of the axon, and the plasma membrane, the axolemma. And at the very end, you see the axon terminal. At the axon terminal, you have synapse, or those synapses will contain synaptic vesicle, just a little bag that contain neurotransmitter that need to be secreted. You can see here the big picture of the synapse. You can see vesicles, synaptic vesicles that need to be secreted onto the next neuron 
For example, here you get two neurons talking to each other. So the communication between one, this is the very end of the neuron here you see. So this neuron will secrete something to the next neuron, a wave to transmit the information coming from the cell body. Based on structure, how many type of neuron we have? We got four based on structure. We have multipolar neuron, bipolar, unipolar, and axon, an axonic neuron. Multipolar is the one that I just showed you with a lot of, let me go back. It's this one right here. It has a lot of, it has a many dendrites and one axon comes coming to it. But the bipolar will have only two sides, right? This is the bipolar at the bottom. You see the dendrites on the top and the axon at the bottom. And then you have the unipolar. It just means that the cell body, the neurosoma, has just one extension coming out of it that will divide it. One will be the dendrite, the other will be the axon. And then you have an axonic with no axon. And axonic means there's no axon. So you got four, multipolar, bipolar, unipolar, and anaxonic the number of pole. Now, we divide the neurons based on the, the way they look like. Now, let's, let's divide them the way they work, how they do things. Based on how they do things, we got three types of neuron. We have neurons that just receive information. We call them sensory neuron. We have neuron that will integrate that information. We call that interneuron. A neuron that will give a command that will carry the work we we'll call motor neuron. So the sensory neurons receive, neur uh, interneurons integrate, and motor neurons do the job. So if you think about it, the sensory neuron, they will detect the stimulus. If somebody touching you right now, the part of your body that will receive the information will have to have a receptor to receive it. That receptor actually will be the dendrite part of the neuron that will take it to the cell body, which will extend it to the axon to carry the command. Then the interneurons will be in the central nervous system, in the brain or spinal cord, where they will integrate, they will make sense out of the information, they will put it together to respond to it. When they give the command, it has to be carried by another neuron called the motor neuron. So the motor neuron will work on the effector, that means the organ doing the job. But the sensory neuron will be on the receptor, the one receiving, and the interneuron will be in the control center where you can integrate information. This is the three functional classes of the neuron we just talked about. You see that on your finger, you have receptors. What are the receptors? They're just dendrites of neurons coming to receiving the information, to receive the information going to your central nervous system, which is your brain or spinal cord. So in the central nervous system, the message has to be integrated and the response has to be given so that the motor neuron can carry the command. That's why you see sensory neuron. Now look at the shape here. You see that the sensory neuron is a unipolar here. Then you see the interneuron, or this one is a multipolar, and then you see the motor neuron is a multipolar. So you can see sensory is unipolar. So I'm putting the structure and the function together now because sensory will be functional, the way they work. But unipolar will be structural, the way it looks like. Together, they kind of do the job. Basically, on this slide, you should understand that unipolar receive and then the uh, multipolar can be interneuron or can be motor neuron. So the axonic transport, it means that when things are done in the cell body in the neurosoma, they have to be transported to the axon terminal to, to do the job. So moving from the cell body to the axon terminal is called the anterior grade direction the entering grade movement. But coming from this, the axon terminal to the cell body is called the retrograde. So when things are being secreted at the end of the axon, they have to be built up somewhere or they have to be made somewhere so they can put, be put together. So the axonal transport is like a two-way passage of protein. Things go back and forth inside the neuron to move stuff, to be secreted or to be recycled. There are two types of um, uh, proteins we need to know that, we need to know here. Kinesin and dynein. The kinesin will move things from the cell body to the axon terminal. And the dynein will move things from the axon terminal to the cell body. In those movements, we have fast axonal transport and slow axonal transport. It means when things moving to, from the cell body to the axon terminal, for example, you have organelles or enzymes or vesicles. 
they're moving fast. Or if things need to be recycled, they will be, for example, the virus of rabies and the herpes simplest and tetanus and polyviruses, they move backward. They move from the axon terminal to the cell body. That's why they can come and kill the neuron and make the person paralyzed. Then slow axonal transport is, is always integrated. Coming from the cell body to the axon terminal, you have some enzyme, the cytoskeletal component, and different things that we move from the cell body to the axon terminal. Here, look at the synapse. This is a neuron that was ending on another structure. So you see the axon terminals here of the um, presynaptic neuron uh, attaching to the soma of the postsynaptic neuron on their dendrite. Here you can see pre and postsynaptic neuron. The neuron before the synapse is called presynaptic. The one after the synapse is called postsynaptic. So you have other neuron terminal that will, the axon terminal that will work on the presynaptic to make the work more or less, depending on the situation. Then neurons will have to be supported by glial cells. So the supportive cell of neurons are called glial. So we have more glial cell up to one to one compared to neuron because neuron has to be fed. What glial cells do? They protect the neuron. They bind neurons together. They put them together. They form the structure. Look at the tissue here. You have a neuron. You have many different kinds of cells around the neuron. You got microglia, oligodendrocyte, ependymal cells, and astrocytes. Those are the four types of glial cells in the central nervous system. So those four types, oligodendrocyte, they cover the neuron, just like a jacket on somebody. The ependymal cell, they secrete the cerebrospinal fluid, the liquid that will nourish the, uh, the neuron, feed the neuron, and take the waste from the neuron. And then the microglial, they're like a vacuum cleaner around, around the neuron. They clean up around the neuron. Then the astrocyte, the big one. They're abandoned. There are a lot of them. They could put structure to the thing. They pr uh, pr uh, form the framework of the, the tissue itself. They feed the neuron. They protect the neuron. They secrete nerve growth factor. You know, they do so many different things. They communicate electrically with the neuron. So they do so many things to protect the neuron, astrocyte. Then in the peripheral nervous system, we have two types of glial cell, the Schwann cell and the satellite cell. The Schwann cell covers the neuron just like oligodendrocytes do in the central nervous system. But the satellite cells, they also surround and nourish just like astrocyte. So Schwann cell and satellite cells are in the peripheral nervous system. Now, what is the myelin shift? It is the covering of the neuron, either oligodendrocyte or Schwann cell. Along the myelin, everything is not covered. We got some empty spaces between the myelin called the nodes of Ranvier. And then the, the myelin itself is called the internode. And the beginning of the neuron where you have action potential, where you have something happen, is called the initial se segment. And the action hillock and the initial segment is called the trigger zone. It's the area where things happen from the cell body to the axon terminal. So the myelin shift, of course, is there for insulation to cover the neuron, to protect the neuron. So myelination is very important to protect the neuron from degeneration. If you look at the neuron here, for example, you see the myelin shift here. You see the axon, the blue one inside the myelin. For example, you see between the internode, you have nodes of Ryan VA. So these nodes are important. We'll talk about them when we talk about the action potential. You see the nucleus, the dendrite, and the axon. This whole thing is the axon. Many axons together will form the nerve fiber. Here you see the axon, the myelin shift in the peripheral nervous system. It's my, Schwann cells or cell, they have nucleus and stuff. So you see the neuron is covered by glial cells. Here also you see it's like a bond, it's like a many different covering in layers. So oligodendrocyte, like I say, is the myelin in the central nervous system. It covers the neuron. Here, here you see oligodendrocyte, it's a cell that covers the neuron, protect the neuron, just like a jacket on somebody. So glial cells can be sources of brain tumor because uh, neurons themselves do not divide, so they cannot be multiplying many, many times because we know tumor or cancer is just multiplication of the cell in, in uncontrollably. So the glial cell can be the source of the, uh, um, cancer. So also multiple sclerosis, sclerosis is when the oligodendrocyte or the myelin is being degenerated, is being kind of hardened or removed. So you, you also have unmyelinated nerve fibers, right? So they're not myelinated. Some of the fibers are not myelinated. 
we'll see the difference when we talk about the action potential. How do they regenerate or degenerate? If the uh, neuron gets injured at the cell body, it will not survive. But if it gets injured at the axon terminal, then the part after the injure going towards the axon terminal will not be living. But this, the, the uh, cell body can regenerate to reproduce, to produce a more axon terminal to be attaching to other cells. Now let's conclude our slide, our uh, uh, lecture with this. Neuron and glial. So now you know what is the neuron. It's just a cell in the nervous system. Now you know what is the glial, the supportive cell of the neuron. We got four types of glial in the central nervous system, two types in the peripheral nervous system. Based on structure, we got four types of neuron, unipolar, bipolar, multipolar, and anaxonic. Based on function, we got sensory, interneuron, and motor. Uh, hopefully, we're going to do this in class again, but if you watch the video before class, it will be very helpful. So I see you in class. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.